Hello, my name is Shalanda Chaudhary, and in this video, I'll explain the resource quota and the limit range for namespace in AKS cluster. So let's start. By default, when we create any pod, it can use any amount of resource which is available in the node it's running on. But that can become dangerous sometimes and can create a problem of noisy neighbor. So to tackle the situation, there is an option called resource quota. The resource quota is applied on the namespace basis and you can limit the total amount of resources that can be used. So there are three ways the resource quota can be defined. One is compute resource quota, where you can define the total CPU and the memory, which can be used by the pods in this namespace. For the storage quota, you can define the total amount of storage and the persistent volume claims that can be created. And the third one is the object quota, where you can limit the count of the resources that can be created like services, secrets, pods, config maps. So you can define if you want only 10 pods to be created in this namespace, you can define that in the resource quota. So by using the resource quota, we can make sure that this namespace utilize only the certain amount of resources which are defined in the resource quota on that particular node on which it's running. So this is the snippet of the resource quota. API version is v1 kind is resource quota, then you have to provide the name, namespace in which you want to run it. And then you have to define the request CPU, request memory, limit CPU and limit memory. And if you're not aware what's the request and the limit, then you can refer to the previous video. I'll just give a quick summary. The request provide the amount of CPU and the memory, which has to be provided while creating of the pod. While the CPU and memory defined in the limit is the amount a pod can extend its resources to. And then you can define the count to, you can define the number of pods, secrets and the services. So in, in this I have defined like three pods can only be created in this namespace. So before proceeding with the limit range, let's check this in demo. For this demo, I'll be using the same AKS demo cluster, which I've been using throughout the whole series. So let's go to the cloud shell and kubectl get nodes there is only a single node okay let's check if any pod is already running we are all good so let's first create a namespace kubectl create namespace and demo namespace will create so that's good now namespace is created. The next step is we'll create the resource quota. Quota.yml. Let's create this file. So I'm creating a resource quota with the name quota and the namespace is demo namespace, where the request CPU is one, limit of the CPU is two, for the memory, it's two gigabyte and three gigabyte. So maximum of three pods can run in the namespace, five secrets and the five services. So let's create this resource quota. Apply hyphen F and the name of the file. The resource quota is created. Let's check. And as you can see, the quota is created, three pods and the CPU limit and the secret limits is all defined. So first I'll try creating the pod without providing the request and the limits and see if we can create the pod. So this is the kubectl command where we are creating the pod in the namespace is demo ns and the pod name will be pod1 and images nginx. So let's run this. And as you can see, because of the quota, we have to define the CPU limits and requests. So let's create a pod by defining the resources. Pod1.yml. Let me copy paste. So we are creating a pod with the name pod1 and the namespace is demo namespace. And we are defining the CPU and the memory limits. So let's create the pod kubectl apply iPhone F and the name 
of the file the pod is created let's check kubectl hyphen namespace which is demo namespace get pod and that's good pod is running now and if we'll describe this pod and you can see this limits and the requests are defined in the pod so now let's edit the file quickly and create two more pods pod 2 and apply and one more edit pod 3 we can also create a deployment but but before creating the deployment we have to first add the number of the deployment in the quota which we have defined otherwise it will take the number of deployment at zero and it will not let the deployment to be created pod 3 and if we apply pod 3 is created let's check the status of the pod and all three pods are running according to the quota the limit is only three pods now if we'll try to create another pod let's see what happens we'll go to the file again we create the pod 4 and when we apply and you can see because it has exceeded the quota so the pod 4 is not created so to summarize the resource quota so we can define the total amount as well as the total count of the resources which can be deployed into the namespace so let's delete all the resources which we have just created so that we can also demo the limit range kubectl and in the first we have to define the namespace demo namespace delete pod pod 1 pod 2 and pod 3 all three pods are deleted and now let's delete the resource quota the resource quota is also deleted now let's go back to the slide deck and check the limit range so within a namespace when we define the resource quota we define the total amount and the count of the resources but there is one problem a single pod can consume as much as cpu and memory as defined in the resource quota which can impact the other pods running within the same namespace to overcome this problem we have the limit range what limit range can do it it can define the minimum maximum as well as the default values for the pod so there is one limit range that has to be created for a namespace so there is a limit ranger admission controller which enforces the default values and the, all the limits on the pods and containers and as similar to the resource quota if the limit reaches then there will be a limit range constraint instead of the quota constraint so if we look at the snippet its kind is limit range i'll define the range as the name and for the demo namespace which we have just created and this limit range applies to the pod or the container so that means a single pod can use maximum of one cpu and one gigabyte of memory and the minimum is 10 micro cpus and 10 maybe bytes of memory if you remember when we created the pod without using the request and the limits then the pod was not created but in this case when we have defined the limit range the pod will be automatically created with the default values which is cpu is 300 memory is 500 maybe byte the default request value is 100 micro cpus and 100 maybe byte of memory and it can go up to 300 if we are not defining the values but if we are defining the values then it will use those particular values so limit range provides the solution for the problems which we faced in the resource quota but the limit range has its own challenges as you can't define the number of the resources to be created and you can't define the total amount as well as the total count for the resources this applies on a single pod basis and the best solution will be if we'll use both the limit range as well as the resource quota so the resource quota will take care of the total resources and the limit range will take care at more granular level for the particular pods so let's check the limit range in the demo
we have already created the namespace so let's check if it's still there and there is a demo namespace so let's create a limit range first range dot yaml let me copy paste So the kind is limit range, name is range, namespace is demo namespace. The maximum values is one and one gigabyte for memory. And we have defined the minimum values and the default values for the container. Let's create this. kubectl apply hyphen f name of the file. And the limit range is created. Let's check kubectl for the namespace demo namespace get limit range and you can see the range is created let's describe this range and for the container cpu memory are defined minimum maximum and the default so when we were creating the pod using the kubectl command where we didn't define the request and the limit the pod was failed so let's try the same thing here now and the pod is created this time let's check kubectl hyphen namespace demo namespace get pod so by default the request should be 100 for the cpu and 100 maybe bytes for the memory so let's describe this pod And you can see 100 for the CPU and 100 million bytes for the memory. And the limit is 300 and 500. So now let's create a pod by defining the custom values. So we already have a file pod1.yml where we are defining 128 memories. Let's make it as 150, which will not match to our values, which we have defined. So the pod4 should be created with the custom CPU and memory. So let's check kubectl namespace demo namespace apply hyphen f and the pod1.yml and the pod4 is created kubectl namespace is demo namespace get pod and pod4 is running that's good Let's describe it. And as you can see, it has the custom values. But if you'll try to create a pod with the value more than which you have defined in the limits, then it should fail. Let's check the limits first. So the limits are one and one gigabyte of memory. So let's check. Let's go to the same file. Let's change it to pod five. And let's define CPU as 1.5, memory as maybe bytes, and the limit as 1.6 and 1. So let's check if this pod will be created. And as you can see, the maximum CPU usage per container is 1, but the limit is. 1600 which we have provided so there is an error forbidden error so to summarize the limit range so in the limit range for a particular namespace we can make sure if any container is cre getting created it should have the default cpu and the memory values and we have already defined the minimum and the maximum value a container can provide and this can easily prevent the noisy neighbor situation because the pod will not consume all the resources which are available in the namespace or on the node so that is all for this video i hope you liked it please like and subscribe thank you so much